Hello, I am Lena. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello, I am Lena. <laughs> Hello, I am Melina. <laughs> we are gonna keep going. And who are you? <laughs> who are you? I don't know. You're Melina. That's all I know. You're Jordan. <laughs> and I'm Jordan. And this Welcome. is Astro Me, my house. If you didn't know, because we didn't intro it. So. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Sorry. Hello, I'm Melina. Okay, you know, we were we we took a week off and. Clearly, it's very evident right now. Welcome back to Ask Me My House. Today, we are going to be talking about how one plus one equals one. What? Yeah. You need to go back to kindergarten math. <laughs> sure do. Um, we had a wonderful time at EXO. We went to the Houston conference. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with EXO, they are a marriage conference. And we this is our second year attending. One of the things that we regret is not attending sooner and earlier on in our marriage. And I would even say before marriage, I think there's so much wisdom that you can get. And it's something that a lot of people lack is wise wisdom from people who have been married for a long time. Is there such a thing as like dumb wisdom? You said wise wisdom. Um, I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like very biblically saturated. Mm -hmm. Um, church conference on marriage. Yes. And it's so, it's a lot. And I feel like this year we were able, able to grasp and understand so much more because we knew the format and like what to expect. So it's a day and a half, but boy, it's a day and a half of like deep stuff. So we wanted to share some of our notes with you guys in case you guys haven't been able to attend. You actually can listen online. They do have several other conferences throughout the year and different locations. The Texas, the Houston one that they do and Grapevine and Houston are like the main big ones, but they do have several ones out throughout the rest of the year. They also have a Michigan one, wink, wink, that we may or may not be at. So <laughs> yeah, it's going to cool. be in Kalamazoo. I believe mm -hmm. it's Radiant Church. Yeah. So come out and see us. We'll be there. Yes. Spoiler so alert. Let's talk about how one plus one equals one. The speaker and the talk we're going to be going through is from Dan Leanne. Really, really love him. Um, and he was speaking on unity. So we just want to ask you the question of, do you speak unity or division over your marriage? I think mm -hmm. for a lot of us, sadly, our answer is division based off of the conversations we have, based off of our actions. Unity is not our goal, even though we obviously know we're supposed to be unified. And so he kind of just highlighted unity and how important it is. Um, and a question that he asked that really like y'all, this like really turned my head upside down. He was asking where we get our definition of marriage from. Is it from the bachelor? Is it from your parents? Is it from Disney movies? Is it from your friend's parents? Where do you get your definition from? And unless you and your spouse have the exact same definition of marriage, there's going to be conflict. And when he said that, I was like, oh, that's where all of our dilemma has been coming from. Like it really just blew my mind. It's so simple and so obvious, but I can look back at our first couple years of marriage and see that that was a huge conflict because I assumed one thing. He assumed another thing. We weren't on the same page. And so that caused the vision instead of unity and us like fighting against each other instead of being unified and trying to figure out what marriage is for us and what our definition of that, which kind of brings me to my next point, which is what is a biblical definition of marriage? Because that should be the only definition that we're kind of looking at. Um, sorry, honey, I'm kind of hijacking over here. I just, oh, this talk uh, was just like, sorry, his talk just really thing, go off, sis. It just really, <laughs> You can't get me laughing because then I won't be able to stop and then I'll be laughing the entire episode. Um, but Sorry. he went like, I swear y'all, this was just so simple, but it just really started clicking in my head for me. Um, but he was saying that a biblical definition, it's laid out for us so simply in the very, very beginning of the Bible. It's one man, one woman becoming one naked in a garden, walking together and walking with God. I was like, oh, easy enough, right? Um, so the last part, like walking with God was the huge part that really convicted me because oftentimes I feel like it's really easy for us to kind of take him out of that equation or like let him be a part of our marriage, but not the center of it. 
And so for me, I was just like, hmm, interesting. I really felt convicted in that. I felt convicted the entire weekend. I'll just say that. <laughs> it definitely calls you to be better and do better. Um, sorry. Is there anything you want to... No, don't apologize. I was thinking back to what you said. There's so much you downloaded there and it was great. But one of the things I really appreciated about like EXO as a whole is they don't really sugarcoat things. They mm -hmm. tell you like, here's the truth and it's good. It's, mm -hmm. it's convicting in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when Pastor Dan was, you know, sharing how like we all get our definitions from somewhere mm -hmm. and even like, it's hard enough as Christians to say like, okay, we have to have the same definition. <laughs> we have to come together and be united. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine for, all the ways that the world interprets marriage and mm -hmm. all the ways that the world, you know, defines it or tries to redefine it really because marriage is God's. It was created by God and established by God. And he does a great job laying out that framework of it, mm -hmm. right? It's one man, Adam, one man, one woman, Eve becoming one. And that's where the one plus one equals two thing mm -hmm. comes from. Mm -hmm. And that let's pause there for a second and just yeah. to describe that because mm -hmm. how do you have a completely separate person mm -hmm. and another completely separate person joining together and becoming one mm -hmm. to get, and that's just. It, Dan highlights and he says that that's like one of the first miracles, like after the world is created, that obviously was a huge miracle, but another miracle is the idea of one becoming one plus one equal one. Um, yeah. And I think that was really cool too. And just helps highlight and show you how important it is to not think of you as separate people as separate bank accounts as separate like fill in the blank because it's so easy to be like well this is this is what I wanted for my life this is what I wanted and like you're getting in the way of that um and that also kind of just touches on um because I, I think by this time a video that I just did would have gone up of like the idea of family and it being a family unit and being a family team instead of a family being constructed of a bunch of di different individuals who are like getting in the way of one another instead of seeing all of us as a team and working together for a mission. Mm -hmm. um, and so this again is just another example of that. Um, and so contrary to what the world thinks and what the world says, which again, we constantly have to remind ourselves and go back. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Because what we hear and what we see out there is not what the Bible says. So we constantly have to be reminding ourselves and in the framework of like, what is the point of marriage? What is God calling our marriage to be? Um, and that to me, again, was just really convicting of constantly reminding ourselves of that. Yeah, absolutely. And then the definition Pastor Dan gave us here that we see in Genesis in the very mm -hmm. beginning goes on to say naked in a garden. Mm. And even before you get to the rest of that, just that word naked, I think is so has such theological depth to it. It's very theologically loaded mm. because when you think about nakedness, mm -hmm. it's more than just your physical appearance of not yeah. being clothed, right? Mm -hmm. There's a nakedness of the heart. There's a mm -hmm. nakedness of the spirit. There's a nakedness of your emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think our culture's framing a very dangerous narrative right now when they say things like men cannot be emotional, especially mm. to their wives. Like mm. husbands can't go to their wives to express their emotions. They need to mm. go somewhere else, whether that's to liquor or to hang out with the boys or mm -hmm. pornography, whatever. Mm. These are all uh, wrong and misapplied um, outlets for mm -hmm. emotional care that mm -hmm. actually when God created Eve and said, I will make a suitor help uh, helper suitable for the man, Adam, that's exactly one of the many attributes that Eve gave to Adam was to be that comforting um, presence of, of course, God was there, right? But there was mm -hmm. something that he, God put in woman to bring that completeness and that wholeness to, to man. And so not only do I think this is, um, you know, a lie that our culture sells to men, but it also mm -hmm. gets passed down to the generations, right? Mm -hmm. So now... For example, my son Ari, if he sees me not going to Milena for emotional um, needs, mm -hmm. he's going to be set up for failure when mm -hmm. he's a man one day and mm -hmm. not realize, always thinking my dad was never emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think men are, are oftentimes even more emotional or passionate, if you will, mm -hmm. than women are because we 
have the potential and the uh, capability to lead and to mm. take initiative and to bring great change to our whole family for the, the enemy, glory of God. The enemy is well aware of that. Yeah. So there's so such attack on men. The, the way that God has set up the family household, if you think, if you will, you have, you know, the man, the wife and the children. And just as you have the father, the son and the Holy Spirit, there's a triune nature in the actual household economy. And I think that's why there's such an attack on that today in our cultures, because mm -hmm. you have an assault on men, an assault on women, an assault on children and lies being sold and all mm -hmm. these different things that are mm -hmm. completely contrary. Like Melina said, going back mm -hmm. to what does the Bible say about these things? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that man is above his wife and it doesn't mean that the husband and wife are better than their children. Mm -hmm. They all serve different roles and all mm -hmm. submit to one another in a, mm -hmm. just as the father, the son, and the Holy spirit, there was submission at play in all of those roles. Mm -hmm. So there are in our relationship with mm -hmm. each other and even our children under us. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, our culture kind of shies away from that. And we're actually going to get into that a little bit more in depth, um, next month. Um, talking, talking more in depth about what does that look like in a, mm -hmm. in a culture that's hostile towards a biblical family model. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's coming down the pike. Yeah. But back to what Dan was saying here, you know, mm -hmm. like we need to be doing this. We need to be naked before our spouse mm -hmm. in the garden. Right. Mm -hmm. And just as Adam and Eve were. Mm -hmm. And so that's not going to your girlfriends, ladies. That's not going to your mom. That's not going to your sister mm -hmm. guys. That's not going to the, the boys, you know, or my homies, whatever, like that's going to your spouse and mm -hmm. to confide in them for mm -hmm. all your physical, mm -hmm. spiritual, and emotional needs. First and foremost, there should mm -hmm. be no other human other than your spouse that you go to. Mm -hmm. And that's me being preaching to myself as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that I need to be reminding myself that Mulane is my mm -hmm. first initial point of contact when it comes to human to human interaction. Yeah. So yeah. And yeah, when he hit on that point, I was like, oh, because <laughs> he asked, like, who is your closest connection? Is it your spouse? If it's not, then you have to do something to change that. Mm -hmm. um, and he was saying that, like, as your years go further and further into marriage, it should be like peeling back an onion, like layer and layer of revealing. And you should be able to reveal yourself without being met with shame. And rather than being met with shame, being met and celebrated and like understood, mm -hmm. um, not saying to celebrate your sin, but like if you're able to expose and openly talk about something instead of your spouse being like, well, ugh, you know, like talking down to obviously be okay with it and being allowing that person to express that without projecting shame on them because they probably already feel that shame. They don't need you to, um, affirm that. Um, but to openly hear what they have to say, um, yeah, that last part was really convicting because oftentimes if there's something going on, I'm like, oh, I need to ask my girlfriends for prayer. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, wait, I should probably ask my husband first. Duh. It's just yeah. like, it's so obvious, but it, it can be a habit that we so quickly fall into on accident. Prayer could be a Christian uh, cover <laughs> for gossip. Which, Shut up. No, it's not. I mean, I'm saying it shouldn't. I'm not saying it should be. I'm saying it oftentimes is used that way and it shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, the last part there on that definition was walking with their God. And mm -hmm. I think to the, the, the way that Dan laid this out was great. We're, we'll try to do justice to it. But mm -hmm. he said, you know, people say all the time you hear, oh, marriage is hard. Marriage is hard. Marriage mm -hmm. is hard. And it's just like, oh, man, like and you're telling yourself a lie to, to kind of have this self-fulfilling prophecy that mm -hmm. because it's hard, I shouldn't put effort into it and it's not worth my effort or I want to do something that's easy mm -hmm. or it's too much. I'm going to throw in the towel and mm -hmm. just look for the first out I can get. Mm -hmm. But the Bible never actually talks about marriage being hard. It says, you know, we, it's biblical to understand marriage as work, mm -hmm. but not that marriage is hard. And there's a difference there because work isn't always hard. Work is sometimes hard. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, things that you'll have to do that you don't always want to do, but that doesn't mean that marriage isn't worth it. It's worth the work. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there's seasons where, you know, you go through great struggle and, you know, challenging times, mm -hmm. but 
it's so rewarding on the other end and an it's endurance. and it's so worth it on the other end that it makes it makes the work not even uh you know something to consider mm. you know like paul talks about it in philippians 3 knowing the compared to knowing jesus everything else is is garbage mm-hmm. and i think in the same way you can apply that principle to marriage that like when you know what you're building with your spouse mm. that they're the the eve to your adam or the adam to your eve mm-hmm. you're now seeing like we can work this garden together we can work this garden of our marriage we can work this garden of our hopes and dreams of our family of our parenting mm-hmm. all these things are now achievable and attainable with my helper with my equal with my partner side by side mm-hmm. and uh that's i think something that brings great joy and it doesn't mm-hmm. actually uh bring any sort of uh, headache or struggle that's not worth the work that marriage is at times mm. mm-hmm. and it just brings right back to the point of one plus one equals one amen sis Reach. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to jump into uh, the next session that we really hit home for. So we'll be back in a few minutes. We'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. And if you don't know, BetterHelp is online therapy done right. Because getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Uh, Melaine and I have done therapy together and it was something that uh, kind of has some sometimes a negative stigma, especially for guys in our cultures to sit there and be vulnerable and to share your heart and to sh- like communicate with your spouse. Um, I, f- I felt convicted because I f- at times feel like I can communicate with everyone else other than my wife, um, my heart. And that's when I realized like, well, there's a problem here. Something's got to change because I need to be able to talk with my spouse, with Milena, um, deeper than any other human. And so being able to sit down with a licensed professional counselor really helped us to communicate our heart and get across what we mean, not just kind of get lost in our emotions. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. There's so many different great reasons to do it. Maybe you're going through a major life change. Maybe you're having trouble at home with your family. Maybe you just don't really have anyone else that you feel you can confide in and talk to. We'd encourage you to get connected with somebody from BetterHelp who can truly help you. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you get match with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash myhouse today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash myhouse. And we also want to thank KiwiCo for bringing you guys this episode. Uh, you've heard Milan and I just rave all about KiwiCo for years now. Our kids love it. We love doing it with our kids. It's the most fun STEM type activities. Each month you get this sweet little box that comes with a new activity that's engaging and educational. And you get to really learn and bond with your children as you're putting it together and assembling whatever that is or you're interacting in a way that you're reading the cards with your kids or even doing science experiments. I mean, there's something for all different types of kids, whatever they're interested in, they're going to love their KiwiCo box. It's fun because Melaine and I have seen our kids discover new things that they didn't know even existed. I remember we built this catapult with Ari. It had like these little cardboard bricks and like a rubber band type of mechanism where once you set it up and load it properly, you can actually like knock over the blocks and he thought it was the coolest thing. And to think that he built it, you could tell he was like proud of himself. It built his confidence and his self-esteem. And it was just a fun thing for me to take in as a parent and be a part of with him. There's something for kids of all ages from discovering the science of magic to engineering a domino machine and more. And there's no commitment so you can pause or cancel at any time. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash as for me. That's 50% off your first month at kiwico.com slash as for me. 
And we also want to give a big thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode. And if you're a regular listener, you know we always recommend Simply Safe Home Security. And we're not the only ones. US News recently named Simply Safe the best home security system of 2023. And CNET recently awarded them their editor's choice for home security. There are many reasons why Simply Safe is trusted by the experts and customers alike. And with all the different options out there, it seems like more and more companies keep getting in the security system game and home security. Uh, but Simply Safe is one that's been around for a long time. They're tried, they're true, they're affordable, they're customized. So for your needs, for your budget, for uh, whatever layout of home you have, you're able to put together your own custom system with Simply Safe. Simply Safe is designed with cutting edge technology and backed by 24 7 professional monitoring. In an emergency, agents use Fast Protect technology only from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police dispatch. This 24 7 professional monitoring service costs under $1 a day, less than half the price of a traditional home security system. You can lock and unlock your doors, access your cameras, and arm and disarm your system from anywhere. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash my house. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafe.com slash my house. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right. We are now going to be sharing a segment from Dave and Ashley. Now, Dave and Ashley, if you guys are familiar with them, they have a podcast. It's called the... The Naked Marriage Podcast. And it's great. They normally almost always talk about sex, but this one actually is not about sex. Um, and it was setting the tone and the tone of your words set the tone for your marriage. Mm. Um, Wait, say that again. The tone of your words set the tone of your marriage. And so their main focus was to talk about your words and your tongue and how powerful your words can be. Um, and I want to ask you guys a question of this. We don't know what your story is, but you have the power through Christ to change it for everyone, for everyone after you. Um, and this was like what they finished off with, but it's kind of what I want to start with because what people don't realize is your marriage can change the projection of so many generations after you. Like what you and your spouse, your one plus one can directly correlate to what happens to the rest of the generations. Mm -hmm. And Dave shared a story of how he's been impacted by his like great, great, great grandmother. He actually had her Bible there. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of walked through different lineages of different families and different abuses that happened. And then one person decided to change that and it forever impacted the rest of the generations. And so I kind of want to encourage you and start off with that statement because it can be very convicting when we go to these things. It can be very like, bro, I'm messing up and I'm doomed forever. Like there's nothing that we can do. But there is redemption. Like God is so gracious with us. Um, so I don't want you to like get too bombarded with this. But um, they were saying the tone of your words set the tone for your marriage. And in Matthew 12, 36, the verse ends with you will be condemned by your words. And I was like, oh, I did not realize that verse said that. Mm -hmm. Like I've read that verse so many times, but the very last part, I feel like is so crucial. Like you will be condemned by your words. Reminds me of the verse that says the power of life and death is in the tongue. That's right. And how powerful and impacting our words are mm -hmm. that tr truly the, God spoke. He used the verbal word and spoke everything into existence yeah. by his word. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the word of God. And, you know, John mm -hmm. 1, 1 says, calls Jesus the word, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have all these, the word is of God is sharper than any double-edged sword, right? Hebrews mm -hmm. 4, 12. And so mm -hmm. this idea of our words, I mean, faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. I can go on, but mm -hmm. there's such an impact and such a, a weight, a weightiness to our words mm -hmm. that I think we often overlook or are there's, again, you have a, a culture battle, right? Mm -hmm. You have a war of the culture here going on with mm -hmm. how, how should you talk to your spouse? Mm -hmm. What's trendy? What's masculine to talk? Like what's a manly way to talk mm -hmm. to your wife? What's a, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, you can get into so much as, as yeah. the, in the way of like distractions and, mm -hmm. and putting them down or 
building them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this was really a a timely message that they brought. Yeah. And kind of like with the first talk that Dan gave, we asked the question of, are you are you having unity in your marriage or are you having division? What was the unity? Yeah. Or division of your marriage. Mm -hmm. Same question here. Are you speaking life over your marriage or are you speaking death over your marriage? Now, if you reflect over the past week of the encounters you've had with your spouse and maybe even just the conversations that you've had or maybe not had, like were those speaking life into your marriage or were they speaking death? Um, And I know it's a tricky one to answer. And I feel like for a lot of us, it most likely is death. It's so easy to let our flesh and just let our anger and just let these nasty things inside of us speak right out. And a huge thing that they just kept honing in on was that what is in our heart is what our Whatever we think about and what we let stew in our minds is what's in our heart. And what's in our heart is what comes out of the tongue. And so it's a heart issue. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that is just so big. Our heart and our minds are connected and what flows out of the heart. But God renews our mind. He renews us. Um, And so we need to start with a different attitude and different approach. And the reason why I wanted to specifically share this one is because sometimes I feel like our marriages are so far back or we feel so discouraged that we feel like there's nothing that we can do. And the end of their talk, I think is what I really wanted to share with you guys, but she encouraged us to start with making one thing that your spouse does, like speak life over them. Ask the question of what is one thing that I love about my spouse? What's one thing that I feel like they do right? And be thankful for that one thing. Find it and be thankful for one thing that they're good at. And then from there, you can change your communication. You can challenge yourself. Just cling on to that one thing. Thank your spouse and thank God for it. And then suddenly those negative thoughts that you have habitually already had. And this, again, goes back to how, what is your definition of marriage? What have you been taught? Was your mother always speaking such negative words about your father to you and to your siblings, to like everyone around you that instinctually you just want to speak that over your spouse because that's what you've always known Mm -hmm. so this is like a habit that you're breaking like again ask yourself what has what have i seen what have been my examples where am i getting my definition from is it speaking life over my spouse or not um and she was saying that these negative thoughts will soon become positive um and then when it came comes from a place of love then you'll start to see the fruits of that. And so suddenly you'll have this change in this shift, but until you do something different, there's nothing that's going to be done that is different. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really like that she just gave one applicable thing. Now, obviously all of this praying together can be super impactful. It's not to say that just like thinking of one positive thing is going to like change your entire marriage, but it is one nice little step that you can take where it it seems impossible to get to the finish line or jump over that bridge. Mm. Um, So I think that really just spoke a lot of life and I really appreciated that. Yeah, no, that's great. I think a couple of thoughts on that is as we wrap up is I thought um, a lot of things that I said to Melina in the past that was like, why did I say that? Like I didn't even, um, I didn't even mean to be, speaking death or speaking negative or speaking poorly Mm. and it's not it's never to anyone else but it's it's like to you and i should be Mm -hmm. more like tender and loving and building you up and giving you life Mm -hmm. and and the way that i talk to you and Mm -hmm. with with my words and so i uh remember thinking this morning you were saying uh i'm gonna you're folding some laundry and you're like i'm I'm gonna go read this book so i could be a better mamaing and i was like (laughs) how's that possible? You know, like you, it's, you can't be a, a better of a mind than you already are. And so I thought, oh, wow, Melina really appreciated that. And that was something that I saw, like gave her life, you know? And so I want to continue doing that more and more. So yeah, that was, that was definitely like sobering for me to have that, um, to have Dave and Ashley share mm-hmm. from them. So I, uh, in the tone yeah, the that tone was like was the big too. biggest thing. That's like what they ended it with, which is what we started with. But so the much tone of, of your words, so it's much of so the, hard. It's not what you say always. It's yeah, it's how you say it, right? And I learned this like through talking with my toddlers, because <laughs> I can say the same thing two times, but if I say one in a very like gentle tone, like on their level with love and with grace, they are so open to hear it. But if I say like, "Go put your shoes on," they're not going to hear it. But if I say, "Honey, can you go put your shoes on?" like 
Nine out of 10 times, they will do it the one way that I say it nicely. And if I just say it like, go put your shoes on, they're, they're met with like, mm, no, such resistance. Yeah. So I feel like that can apply to any type of relationship that your tone can definitely set. Like when I go to the Starbucks line and I'm like, hi, how are you? Instead of being like, hi, how are you? You know, like I can, <laughs> I can really get good with my tone, but sure. yeah, it's very impactful. Absolutely. Any no, last was, words, honey? No, that was great. I can't wait to go back, back again later this year and mm -hmm. next year and the year after and the year yeah. after that and the next year and the next year. And I don't want to discourage people too, because we understand that like attending a marriage conference is not always doable for everyone in each season that they're in in life. But even if it's something that like your church may have, I just want to encourage people to at least once a year go to something where you're getting poured into from other people who have been married for way longer than you have um, and get out of your little circle. Cause it's so easy to like get encouragement and biblical wisdom from like different people. But I think once you like step out of that and it's from people you haven't seen before and people who have had different experiences and had like, there's so much love and light that can come from that. So definitely want to encourage you guys to do that. It's so culture countercultural mm -hmm. to do that to leave the kids like i remember last year when we went it was one of our first times leaving the kids and it was really hard it was really hard yeah but the fruits that we saw from it and like the steps that we've made to put our marriage first we've been so easily able to see the fruits of it and have been able to pour that into our kids that it's like a no-brainer to leave them for a day and a half because what we just learned in those day and a half will impact us for the next 50 years, like no exaggeration. So yeah. um, definitely just want to encourage, don't be discouraged. They have it on EXO online so you can, yeah, you can stream, stream the it. services. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper that way and you can do it from your home. Yeah. Um, maybe just get a sitter, or have like sitter swap with a friend or a couple or have grandma watch them do something so you're able to pour into your marriage. Because if you don't have your marriage, then your kids, like it directly affects your kids. Think of all the other things we invest time into. Yeah. And how much more like important. Like sports. We put is. so much money into sports every year. Into going out. Like there's so many things that we spend so much money on every year that we don't realize that if we stopped those for maybe three months, mm. we would be able to have a <laughs> An altar call. <laughs> It's true. What are your priorities? Because your priorities are what you're spending your time and money on. So yeah. if this is something that's important to you, you will flip things around and make it happen. Yeah, okay, you'll be done. so glad. Sorry. You'll be so glad you did just to yeah. not to belabor what Melina said, but it was like for us when we did it, we're like the sidebar conversations or mm -hmm. in between sessions mm -hmm. or at dinner that night afterwards, like too. all those like, yeah, those ways to go deeper, even beyond just the sessions and the speakers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were all bringing, bringing fire, yeah. but it was like having that time to process it and then discuss with your spouse too. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, you can't put a price on it. So mm -hmm. um, can't recommend it enough. And yeah, we had a great time. Mm -hmm. It was really, really beneficial. Cool. I think we're all done here, y'all. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week.